It's all cash strapped. Egypt is taking drastic measures as it deals with its worst economic crisis in decades. The Egyptian pound hit a record low today, weakening more than 35 percent after the country's central bank hiked interest rates and said it would let the currency trade freely. Following the move, Reuters reports the IMF has just approved a long-awaited $8 billion loan to Egypt. In response, now look, Egypt has been struggling with a chronic shortage of foreign currency and persistent inflation, which has reached unprecedented levels in recent months. Well, to break this down for us, joining us to discuss this is Timothy Caldas. He's deputy director of the Takaria Institute for Middle East Policy. Put this in simple terms for us, if you will. Explain the potential short and long term effects of what is this? float, this devaluation in the first instance? Sure. I mean, it, it all depends on if this is genuinely a float or if it's a devaluation. So you're, you're, you're right to actually say both. In the past, when Egypt has said they floated the pound, they actually devalued and continued to manage it, which led to uh, a number of problems. Um, if it's truly a float, um, it's going to result in at least a period of some instability as the uh, as the currency uh, arrives at some uh, uh, some uh, balance and equilibrium in the market, um, there are potential uh, inflationary consequences. But a lot of the goods in the Egyptian market are already priced at the black market rate, which uh, was significantly higher than even what the official rate is trading at now. It reached at one point as much as 70 Egyptian pounds to the dollar, whereas to the official rate is currently at 50. Mm -hmm. um, so it still remains to be seen. In the in the long term, it really depends again on what the government does. If it if it actually reforms in the ways that it's pledged to, and reining in uh, the uh, the military's companies, uh, reducing the no large number of unaffordable and yep. poorly planned mega projects, these sorts of things, maybe it could be a sign that you know they're moving uh, in a in a more sustainable direction. But if they take this as an opportunity to borrow more money and spend it unwisely, then unfortunately we're going to see another crisis in the not too distant future. Well, these reforms, um, uh, you know, ensuring that the military played a, a, a less significant role in, in, in the economy going forward, were part of a package demanded by the IMF in order to get uh, the significant uh, loan that Egypt has been waiting for. Reuters now reporting just uh, in the last hour or so, that the IMF has now approved that much-awaited $8 billion loan to Egypt, increased from $3 billion previously. Do you tie these moves to float the pound? And if, as you say, you know, if that's really what we're looking at here, very specifically uh, to what we have just reported, this IMF loan now delivered or about to be delivered... Yeah. No, absolutely. There's no doubt that the IMF approving, uh, ex increasing the size of Egypt's loan that was originally agreed to in 2022 uh, is is in direct response to the flotation of the pound. However, if the pound proves not to be floating, they might not disperse that money. That's already the case with the loan from 2022, where because the pound wasn't floating and other reforms weren't implemented, mm -hmm. the IMF never actually dispersed most of that $3 billion that was originally agreed to. So it remains to be seen if the loan will actually be dispersed in, in the tranches in the years to come. Uh, and that really depends a lot on what the government does and to what extent it sticks to its, uh, its word. What do you make of or how significant is um, the $35 billion deal struck late last month with uh, one of the sovereign wealth funds here in the UAE, ADQ, to develop parts of Egypt's Mediterranean coast and elsewhere. I mean, how does that play into this wider story? It's it's a major factor. So the, the Egyptian uh, authorities were very uncomfortable floating the pound without a large kind of war chest of hard currency uh, to kind of shore up confidence and be able to uh, combat uh, speculative spikes in the price of the dollar. So the injection of a huge sum of uh, money from the UAE gave them that war chest, and I think it was instrumental in their their comfort and willingness to to make this move today. Um, and, and just once again, though, we have to hope that this that this money is used prudently, unlike the, the last decade, frankly, 
And additionally, I would say that mm. Egyptians, I mean, I have mixed feelings about this deal because for the last couple of years, it's felt like the Egyptian government has been selling public assets, public companies, more or less under duress due to the extraordinary financial strain that uh, the Egyptian state is under. And, and that's in no small part due to the way that Sisi and his and his uh, partners have leveraged the state recklessly to consolidate power and, and enrich uh, regime owned enterprises. Mm. Right. Yeah. And interest in further deals, as I understand it, from Qatar and from uh, from Saudi Arabia. These Gulf countries have in the past, certainly the, the Saudis and the UAE, provided sort of aid in cash to Egypt. It now seems, you know, that 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 there is there is money forthcoming, but there has to be something at the back end of it. And and and, and here in lies the, you know, these deals about land. Uh, last question to you: What does this What does this all mean for the average Egyptian? I mean, we're looking at official figures of Egypt's annual rate of inflation over thirty one percent in January. These economic woes aren't sudden, are they? I mean, you know, what have Egyptians been going through, and what can they expect next? Egyptians have suffered an almost endless series of economic crises for the last decade, unprecedented levels of inflation on multiple occasions, uh, multiple collapses in their currency. When CC took power, the Egyptian pound was about seven pounds, the, the US dollar, and today it's at 50. Um, so, but unfortunately, I think that the best case scenario in the, in the short to medium term for most Egyptians is that the deterioration will slow down. Uh, the, this, the, the cumulative impact of impoverishing Egyptians through unprecedented levels of inflation, a collapse in their purchasing power, and, uh, and, and also a serious hit to their ability to purchase nutritious food for themselves and their families. That's going to be with them for quite some time, and it's going to take a long time to, to, to address that. And I, I genuinely hope that the government uses these new resources to invest in health, education, social protection, all these things have been underfunded and in violation of Egypt's constitution. They've been funding them at lower rates than the constitution requires. Good to have you, sir. Your insight and analysis, extremely important. Thank you.